Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be covering um, a couple of percentages questions, um, some of which have been sent in and some of which I've just picked up um, to formulate um, just a, a video as such that, um, that you guys might find useful. So one of the reasons why I decided to do percentages, I think that sometimes people do worry too much about um, kind of over complicating and uh, like questions and the really really hard questions because Medify does have hard questions it really really does um, but the point is that most questions that you get on your real UCAT will be more of the shorter simplistic style so nailing percentage change conversions ratios proportion that kind of thing and that's exactly what this will be basically so that's why I thought I would do a couple of questions which are basically more focused on nailing the intrinsic ideas Okay, so let's have a look at this. So it says keratosis magnesium reading is 20% lower than what is acceptable. Okay, so it says film table shows the lowest and highest acceptable levels. Okay, so it's 20% lower. So um, if I get my calculator and I do 0 0.7 times 0 0.8, which is 0 0.56, actually I didn't need to do that into my calculator, that's what her reading currently is. Okay, what does her reading need to increase by to be at the top end of the acceptable range? So the top end of the acceptable range Magnesium is 1, so 1 minus 0 0.56 is 0 0.44. But of course, let's say we wanted the answer as a percentage and not just as a, as a raw number, um, then all we have to do is it's just, remember, the fast way to do percentage change is just final divided by initial minus 1 times the whole thing by 100. So 1 divided by 0 0.56 um, minus 1 times 100, so 1 divided by 0 0.56. And then let's subtract 1 uh, times 100 gives us 78.57 dot, 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 which is 78.6%. Okay, so you can see it's not necessarily um, one of the most challenging questions, but it definitely can be something that could be tricky if you hadn't put the right numbers or you hadn't looked at the right areas. Okay, um, really, really goes to show why you have to very, very, very specifically read questions as such. Okay, make sense? Cool. Okay, so let's keep going then. So on to um, the next question. Okay, if Anna has a phosphate reading of 0 0.6, what percentage increase would be needed for this reading to be equivalent to the mean reading for this test? Okay, so let's have a think about this question that's presented to us here. So her phosphate reading is 0 0.6 what would be the percentage increase needed for the reading to be equivalent to the mean reading for this test? Well, I think they've worded this question badly, first of all, uh, in terms of what they mean about the mean reading, because they don't really say about the mean anywhere. But I think based off the numbers you're given, you're given 0 0.6, and the only two other values you have about phosphate are 0 0.8 and 1.5. So all you can really do is find the mean between them by adding them together and dividing by 1. Um, and so when you do that, you get 1.15. Okay, so what percentage increase we needed for this reading to be equivalent to the mean reading? So once again, let's do the fast way for percentage change, which is just going to be 1.15 divided by 0 0.6, subtract 1 times 100. Okay, so 1.15 minus 0 0.6, uh, sorry, divided by 0 0.6 minus 1 times 100 is just going to be 91.66 dot, 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 which is 91.7%. Okay, so similar ideas for both these questions here, if anything. Okay, um, so yeah, you just got to watch out for this one. Like I said, I think it's badly worded, and I don't think in the real thing you'll get a question that's as badly worded as, as this one. Okay, so don't worry too much about it, is what I would say. On to the next question then. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So what's the percentage difference in budget between the British Library and the Royal Danish Library? So just one thing that I'd like to say before we can do this question properly is that if it doesn't specify which the final and the initial are, then you can kind of take it as chronological. That's one of the things that I mentioned in my earlier percentages video. So if you guys are new around here and you're new to the channel and you haven't seen my first percentages video, I would highly recommend you to check that one out. And the f Because I talk about some of the interesting concepts there and main ideas before also diving into questions. And obviously this is a follow-up video, so this won't make as much sense if you haven't watched the first one. So British Library, okay, Royal Danish Library. Uh, budget, this amount, this amount. So one pound equals 8.44 DKK. So since we're going, this is the initial. So I'm just going to convert the 140 million into DKK. I'm guessing that's that Danish kroner. Um, just, yeah, I think it must be Danish kroner. 
Um, so therefore, it's going to be um, uh, this times that as such. Okay. Um, and yeah. Okay, so what's the percentage difference between the British Library and the Royal Danish Library? So that's going to be 190, I guess, million um, Danish krona, I think. Okay, and then for the RDL, it's going to be 385.9 million Danish krona. And so once again, so I think one of the annoying things here is that um, when it comes to the way that they've presented this question, I guess, um, the answers haven't necessarily been presented in the most appropriate of ways. So what I mean by that is um, because in their actual calculations, they've considered the Royal Danish Library to be the initial and the British Library do the final, which once again, I think is bad wording of the question. Um, so we will do the answers both ways, basically. So let's do it the way that I first did it basically so in terms of this is the initial this is the final so 385.9 divided by 1190.04 minus 1 times 100 which gives us um 1190.04 subtract 1 which is negative 67.6 percent okay but if we were doing it the other way so we were considering this to be final and this to be initial then the calculation changes because it becomes 1190.04 because that's the final value divided by 385.9 because that's the initial value minus 1 times 100 so 1190.04 divided by 385.9 minus 1 times 100 which equals 200 and 8.38 dot 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 which is 208.4 percent so the point to highlight here is i think that once again dodgy wording of questions so don't worry too much about it but as long as you're comfortable with the basics and um probably because actually for this question i didn't um receive um what the answers answer options were so i'm not sure if the other answer option would have been present. So it may have been that you just did it the way that I first calculated it, with British Library being initial, and then your number just wouldn't have been there. So you would have probably had to switch over and do it the other way. Okay? Makes sense? Cool. So let's go on to um, the next question then. So to the nearest whole second, what was the time taken by the winner to complete the 800 meter race if Shaborn's time was 8% slower? Okay, so if Shaborn's time was 8% slower what was the time taken by the winner to complete the 800 meter race okay so um okay so if Siobhan's time was eight percent slower than the winner okay the winners so 189 equals 1.08 times x okay i know it says eight percent slower but that basically means that she was she, because timing is dodgy, 8% slower means she took 8% more time. So 189 divided by 1.08 is just 175, which equals X. So it's a, it's a more simplistic question. But the reason why I put it in here is because people can get tripped up. They might put 189 equals 0 0.92 times X, which is which will be wrong. And this converts into 2 minutes and 55 seconds. Okay? So that's what the answer would become. Okay. So let's have a go at this question then, okay? So what, um, if the number of private passengers increases to 1,457 in March, what would be the average increase in private passengers per month, okay, from January to March? Okay, so this is an interesting question. So the way that I would do it is, um, so I guess technically the way that I would do it is not necessarily... Um, the way that they've done it as such. I'm going to go through the way that they've done it. And I th thought I would talk you through the w way which made sense to me as well. Um, but um, yeah, we can kind of compare them uh, and go from there, basically. Okay, cool. So let's go for it. So what will be the average increase in private passengers per month from January to March? And we want this given as a percentage. So the answer gives it as a percentage. So the way that they've done it is that they've just calculated the individual changes. So it's just percentage change from, uh, so from Jan to Feb which is just 1240 over 992, subtract 1 times 100, which is, so 1240 divided by 992, subtract 1 times 100, which is 25%. And then they've done Feb to March, 
which is 1457 divided by 1240 minus 1 times 100, which is 1457 divided by 1240 minus 1 times 100, which is 17.5%. So therefore, what is the average increase of private passengers per month? It's just the mean of these two values, which is just both of them added, added together, divided by 2, which gives you 21.25%. OK, but I'll be honest, this wasn't my first inclination. And um, the way that I thought about it was, if you think about it, you start at 992, right? And you end up at 1457. So it's like you go to some middle number and you end up over here. But the point is that each time you're dividing by your time, if you think about average increase in private passages per month, I thought it would be the same kind of percentage that you increase by, I guess. I mean, I know my working is a little bit flawed and I think, once again, they haven't worded the question very well. And I can see why you'd have to do it like this, the average increase in private passages per month, because this is, you know, you calculate it, the increase for each month and find out the average of that. But the way that I thought about doing it was I just thought you'd find the percentage change between both of these values, okay? So by doing this, 1457 divided by 992, Subtract 1 times 100, which is 46.875%. And then, um, oh, sorry. Um, give us one sec, sorry. So don't do the times 100. Because basically, if you think about it, at each time we're um, <laughs> multiplying by the same, um, like, the same factor basically to bring up our number. So 992 times y squared equals 1457. So I did 1457 divided by 992 to work out what y squared would be. So 1457 divided by 992 was 1.4678. So 1.46, sorry, 875 equals y squared. So to work out y, I square rooted this number, which gave me 1.21999 dot 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 dot, which is y. So I guess the actual answer I would have got would have been this one. Um, but then um, this would have definitely matched with this as the closest answer. So maybe I would have got it right for the wrong reasons. But of course, I always want to be honest with you guys, and I just thought this was something interesting to think about. I can see why this technically isn't the right way to do it and why this would be the right way, because, you know, it's it's this per month idea, I guess. You have to work out that average increase um, um, for each month, as opposed to this as a whole. This is for both months. Um, but yeah, just just another interesting idea, that's all. OK, so I hope this video was helpful. Um, and as always, please do, um, you know, let me know how, how things are going on. And um, please do share, like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.